that's the whole A clutch drum, including uh, the gear set, except uh, the clutch pack spread out here uh, on my workmate. Hello everybody and welcome to day 53 of my Jaguar S-Type restoration project. Last time I finished the teardown of my CF6 HP26 transmission drums and now it's up to putting back together at least the first of those. That's the whole A-clutch drum, including uh, the gear set, except uh, the clutch pack spread out here uh, on my workmate. It's in the correct order from the inside to the outside. The components are uh, the drum housing, the piston, a spring, the planetary carrier, a snap ring, uh, the sun gear, uh, a needle bearing, another smaller snap ring, and uh, the planetary assembly. In a previous episode of this series I was changing out uh, the two pushings here inside and earlier this day I cleaned up the spring and the planetary carrier uh, with brake cleaner. Uh, furthermore, I lubricated the three uh, planetary pinions here in this assembly as well as uh, the needle bearing. Uh, there was no cleanup to do on the drum itself and uh, the piston. The oil inside here looks quite clean. Two bags coming with the CF overhaul kit are assigned for uh, the A drum, the number 9 and the number 10. While bag number 9 contains uh, simple O-rings, uh, the seals uh, in number 10 look uh, far more massive. In the first step I will have to remove uh, the two O-rings uh, from the piston and uh, one more here uh, from the planetary carrier. And actually uh, I have the simple O-rings. Here's the number two. And the final one. So let's replace those with the new ones out of bag number 9. One is small, one middle sized and a large one. Yeah, I guess the largest one belongs onto the planetary carrier. The lip here on this side is bigger than here on the inside. so. I will position this upside down. And here we go. Now the small one here on the inside. And the middle sized O ring on the outside of this piston. Voila! I will now apply some lubrication onto the seating surfaces of the piston here on the outside, on the inside and on the mating surfaces here and here inside the drum. Now I'm gonna put uh, the piston back into the drum and when doing this uh, we'll try not to contact these sharp edges here with the inner o-ring. Maybe a little turning helps to slide the piston down. Yeah, and actually it does. So the piston is fully seated. Now I can put the spring back inside, facing upwards in the middle. By the way, uh, this spring uh, already caused wear marks here at the bottom 
of the planetary carrier. First, uh, I thought uh, these were intentionally machined, but obviously uh, they are not. I now have to decide to put the spring back exactly where it was or do the opposite thing. Of course, the second version would be the way to go because this would, in a functional sense, remove uh, the wear. But since the carrier belongs inside that way, I don't see any way uh, where the spring exactly goes. To reduce wear, maybe a good idea to lubricate this also, because the parts are moving on to each other uh, as soon as the spring gets compressed. The planetary carrier itself is also sliding inside the piston, so of course the surfaces have to be lubricated as well. So let's give this a try. And here I'm now facing the first real problem. As you can see, uh, the position of the planetary carrier is determined by those gears and at the same time uh, the position of the uh, planetary gear set is determined by those four fixings here and at the same time those three pinions exactly have to be on those three positions uh, so now I have to find out where this carrier exactly belongs and I guess uh, one of those pinions here is exactly uh, between the fixings that means uh, the pinion has to be exactly here in the middle or there in the middle and so I will simply turn the carrier one tooth no yeah I think now it's exactly here in the middle I guess I found a way now to get the spring exactly here in the middle where the carrier isn't worn one wear mark is exactly here in the pinion area and the pinion area will be here in the middle so I just have to turn the spring that way wear mark here springs besides and since those gears also slide against each other as soon as the spring gets compressed and relieved it's a good idea I guess to do a little lubrication here as well to get this spring compressed and the snap ring back inside I will this time use my hydraulic press. Yeah, the snap ring is now in position. The trick here was to get not only this but also that surface underneath uh, the snap ring groove otherwise uh, these protruding parts uh, would prevent the snap ring from getting seated. Previous to the final reassembly I must uh, put uh, the planetary assembly uh, back together. The sun gear uh, looks different on both sides. Uh, one cutout is straight and the other one here not. You have to know that uh, this needle bearing has to fit inside and of course it doesn't fit into here, it fits inside here. The side including the needle bearing right on this bearing down there This snap ring will hold uh, the planetary assembly inside the planetary carrier. So this has to be seated here inside, but not 
Ah, I see. The groove is a little bit more on top here. So let's pull this up a little bit. Yes. One click and the snap ring is out of the way. So the sun gear can spin freely. And now the final step, um, fixing uh, the planetary assembly in place here inside the planetary carrier. Here I have to take care not to do this the wrong way. As I told you before, uh, the pinions have to meet these three points. And to achieve this, the pinion here in the middle has to be positioned here. Otherwise, this pinion would get positioned on this place and all the pinions would be offset related to the points where they belong. Here, yeah. and the carrier is now again fixed in place. This has been the rebuild of the A-clutch drum. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to my channel. See you back next time. Goodbye.